Alright, uh, the, the, the next point is the somber point. Um, it's about the mass shootings that we just saw. Five in one weekend. I posted that there were three because I'd only heard about three. There was only three that was being um, a real big deal, uh, that was being made into a real big deal. Um, look, the epidemic is a big deal. I, I think the amount of mass shootings that America has is a big deal. Uh, we had Gilroy at the Garlic Festival. It's like, what the fuck? Does this guy hate garlic? What the, was he a vampire? He's, he's like a Dracula apologist. We shot a kid, man. A six-year-old kid got shot and killed. Gilroy, California. I have family that lives close to that area. Then you had El Paso. And that guy had a manifesto. Um, then you had Dayton. And then the two that you didn't hear about is Chicago and Brooklyn. And I'm sure you didn't hear about those two because everybody's like, oh, it's Chicago and Brooklyn. There's shootings every day. Yeah, don't. Why are you normalizing it? Why are you normalizing it at all that there's shootings anywhere all the time ever. That's that's just a weird thing to just be like, yup, people get gunned down. We're spraying bullets. That's just what, it's a fucking Tuesday. Don't, don't make it normal. Don't sit there and just be like, yeah, this is a justified thing because it's Wednesday. Like, it's not, that's not what we should be doing. This is coming out of fear. This is fear-based behavior. These are fear-based attacks. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with the Gilroy guy or the Dayton guy. Um, I haven't I haven't looked into the the deeper links of um, Chicago and Brooklyn. I, I plan on doing that. The, uh, a, a friend of mine put 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 that into the comments of one of my posts. Uh, but I but I, in that post I did talk about how I think this is because we're afraid of each other. We're at the top of the food chain. We don't have anything to fear. So now we've manufactured a bunch of shit to make each other be afraid of each other. That's it. This is one of the things I'm addressing in my act right now. Is is this manufactured reasons to be afraid of each other. That's all it is. Right, like this dude has a manifesto, and from from what I can gather, it's a very anti-immigrant manifesto. This dude in El Paso, uh, that I can't, I'm I'm not sure if he's alive or not. Uh, if you know, comment, leave a comment below, leave a link uh, to to something. I'm not sure if he's alive or not, but I found his manifesto. I found the dude's manifesto. There there are so, uh, there's like one or two places that posted what this manifesto and and the beginning of it is he agrees with the Christchurch shooter in New Zealand and um the, I, I haven't fully read it I want to I want to read it and I want to kind of do because here's the thing I want to read that manifesto and I also want to read the manifesto that was le uh, left by the uh the Tacoma Washington uh bomber who attacked the, the you know the the uh immigrant detention facility and uh I'm curious because I feel like both of those guys were acting out of fear. Look, it's hard for human beings to take another human being's life. I, I think it's hard for any animal to take the life of their own species. Like, something very visceral needs to happen in order for that to be a decision that you're just okay making. That's a real difficult thing to do. My wife and I were talking about um, being bullied as kids, and um, I was bullied a bunch. Uh, I was dropped in the concrete when I first came into this country, and uh, I, you know, like I got into fights a, a, a bunch. But every time that I fought, I always kind of held back, even though I was real mad at the person that was like trying to fight me. Like I was real fucking mad at them, but I always held back. I always pulled my punches. Because I was, like, nervous about actually doing damage to them. Uh, they didn't give a fuck about doing damage to me. But I always held back. And now it's like, I just don't have uh, 
any desire to to fight anybody like have a physical altercation like you have to do something deeply deeply disturbing to change that psychology in my brain to go from being what I am now is trying to understand people um, see where people are coming from learn you know uh, have a purpose for my curiosity to beating the shit out of somebody and maybe even killing them that's a big leap so, so fear can do that sort of stuff though fear, fear makes you act I mean fear is you go into survival mode and you go into defensive mode and this guy is afraid of immigrants this guy is afraid that the immigrants going to come over and take his job and he's going to be left behind and, and it's like kind of encapsulates a bunch of stuff about the debates, right? Is first of all, this fear is being stoked by the president. The, Trump does do some anti-immigrant rhetoric, but here's the thing, man. Trump's not the first person to have anti-immigrant rhetoric, right? Obama deported more immigrants than any other president. Uh, Bush had anti-immigrant rhetoric. It, Reagan... Uh, Clinton, they all fucking did it. They all stoked the fear of the immigrant, but they always wanted the model immigrant. That's, you know, like the Indian people or the model immigrants. Like, even after 9-11, though, I will say that 9-11 did change some shit because even after 9-11, like, we weren't, even though we were model immigrants, I still got my fucking ass kicked for being brown. I still, I still got pummeled for that shit. And then now it's changed because if I speak out against the American war economy, people will fucking attack me for it. Uh, and people people will say that I don't have the right to say shit, shit like that because I'm not American. And even if you are American, you shouldn't say it because then you're you're a commie pinko liberal cuck. So it's like, you, do, you know, you're just not supposed to criticize the American war industry. But he's not, Trump's not the first person to do that sort of shit. So let's stop pretending like he is, he is the only reason for it. He's not. He is stoking the, he's stoking the flames. For sure, but he's not the only reason for it. Every president before him has set up something. We forget that, like historically, this has been building for a long time. You know, uh, the the inaction from past presidencies about this fear mongering has led us to see at least one mass shooting a day. And and you know. Some, somebody posted a, a long list of mass shootings, like how many people got killed every day. I mean, it's like four or five people that are getting shot now. And that shouldn't be normal. And, and, and I feel like if we, if we really examine it, it's like this person did it because they were scared of the other person. We're, we're, we're going to have the debate about guns. We're going to have the debate about uh, gun ownership and all that kind of stuff. Look, if you want to own a gun, fine. But know what you're owning. You're owning a weapon. You're owning a weapon that has one purpose. And that purpose is to kill. That's the purpose of that weapon. There's no there's no other reason for it. I did a stand-up bit about it very long, uh, a, a few years ago. I almost said very long time, but uh, I'm 30. I'm not like 100. Uh, but like, like a few years ago, I had a stand-up bit where I addressed that. People are going to find a way to kill each other, um, whether it's through guns or not. But here's the thing about the gun as a tool. It is a killing tool. That's it. There is no other purpose beyond the fact that it is meant to take the life of another living thing. It's the purpose of a gun. So if you're going to have it because you're scared of whatever, then you should learn how to use it. And you should also, you should also like, I'm, I'm for the common sense gun laws. I'm for, if you have a gun license and a registered gun, uh, then you should renew that license every year. There has to, there, you could go through a test, something. I, I, I think that's a great idea. I don't know if that's going to solve the problem of human beings murdering each other because we are fucking scared of each other. We fear each other. We are each other's predators and we are each other's prey. That's it. That's where this mentality is coming from. 
And people in uh, like like Trump are stoking that fear. People that sit there and start calling other people dumb because they want to own guns are continuing to stoke that fear. You know what people don't want to do? They don't want to be left behind. They don't want to be forgotten. So they get scared that as the world changes, from the norms of what they knew before them, that they're going to get left behind, that they're not going to be special, like they don't have a purpose in today's world. That was all kind of discussed in that debate. And it all leads to the arms, uh, uh, arms movement, right? That's who needs to fear. Who needs to fear? The American war economy. We need to be afraid of the world around us. We, and we, we will destabilize more countries. We will create a refugee crisis in more countries. We will attack more countries. We will try to uh, uh, absorb their resources and claim that it's ours. Manifest destiny on a global scale. And we need to stoke fear so that if there is a refugee crisis, instead of actually looking at the American war economy being responsible for that shit, you make the people who are victims of that war economy the enemy. And you make people afraid of them. So you get people to, to use their second amendment to get their guns and start shooting up a fucking Walmart. Because there's immigrants there. It's ridiculous, man. That's what that's what's stoking that fear. And what and, and we see it. We can see it. We can see it if we can look beyond our fears. What who is responsible for it? Who's really responsible for it? And we'll find out that on the ground level, we don't need to fear each other at all. White people, black people, brown people, immigrants, women, transgender people, gay people, we don't, no, nobody needs to be afraid of any of these people. Nobody needs to be afraid of anybody based on their identity. The American war economy stokes that fear. The media is the propaganda wing of the American war economy and props that fear up and puts it directly in your face day in and day out. And they will fucking win because we will continue to see all these mass shootings. And we can talk about gun legislation all day. Like I said, I'm a proponent of common sense gun laws. Let's have the discussion and let's put something into, into effect. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. There's a lot of people that were... Yelling at the governor of Ohio, do something, you have the power, and he does, and he doesn't want to because he's going to go up against the NRA lobby, and the NRA lobby has a lot of power and money. I'm all for regulating that industry. I'm, I'm all for restraining the goddamn arms industry. But what are we going to do about being afraid of each other? How are we going to make people less afraid of the immigrant, less afraid of black people? and less afraid of white people. We have to start listening to each other, learning from each other, figuring out what our perspectives are, figuring out why we're scared. If we're not willing to do that, then people are gonna feel like they're, they're not important, they're gonna get forgotten, they're gonna get left behind, and that's gonna lead to extreme actions like this. It's a fucking tragedy. Regardless of what the details are and what legislations we pass, it's a fucking tragedy that people think that way. It's a, it's sad. And people shouldn't think that way. We don't need to be afraid of each other. Period. I will also say I'm losing... Um, the more I listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, I'm starting to lose a little bit of respect, more and more respect for that man. I used to listen to Star Talk all the time. Right, and uh, I, I used to particularly enjoy that show. And then the more I kind of started listening to it, there was a pompousness uh, to Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was he was very like uh, cocky about himself. Like you know, he's an astrophysicist. He's on the social left, so he must be better than everybody. There, there's that level of pompousness to, to Neil deGrasse Tyson that I don't particularly enjoy. Um, other people probably feel differently. Hey, look, if you like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, that's cool, man. Uh, I like a lot of the science shit that he has to say. Uh, I just don't like the methodology of the way he says it. And and sometimes he sticks his nose into politics. 
and uh, usually it's bad. Usually, like, it's very tone deaf because he comes from this, like, unemotional state. And I'm, I, look, uh, human beings don't have a mastery of their emotions. We just don't. Um, and every time there's a tragedy like this, it's very evident about the fact that we don't have uh, a mastery of our emotions. And I'm not saying don't feel your emotions. I'm saying let's figure out how to use them for, for productive means. And that's very difficult to do. And one way that you don't, one way that you can't gain mastery of your emotions, you can't, um, learn how to uh, use your emotions in a productive mean is by telling people not to feel it, is by going on a 100% on a logic driven base. And I'm, I'm saying this out of making that mistake myself. But Neil deGrasse Tyson put out a tweet and uh, he said like, oh, we're, we're uh, up in arms about 34 people dying, it's 36 now over the course of one weekend. Uh, but here's a bunch of other types of death. You know, he included suicide in there, uh, the flu, medical mistakes, um, cancer, that sort of stuff. Look, uh, those numbers are large, and again, all of that sucks. I can't imagine losing somebody to some sort of a disease, because it's virtually like unexplainable as to why that person had to go to the people that are very close to them. I can't imagine what it's like losing someone to cancer. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like losing someone to a medical mistake and what that doctor has to go through in living with that mistake for the rest of their lives. Can't imagine any of those things. Tragic stuff. Real, I mean, that. I, I, do, I do consider myself an empath, so if, if I'm in that air, like if I'm in the presence of somebody that's telling me something about these sort of things, it's hard for me to not feel the weight of what you're saying and that weight having an effect on me. It's just part of my personality. Um, but just looking at the statistics of it, I can't even imagine it, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's incredible. But that's not the point. The, the point of why this is tragic is because this is human beings taking the lives of other human beings. In under one minute, too. In under one minute, or like one or two minutes, these people were able to kill like nine people, 20 people, injure a shit ton of people. The, the question really should be is, are, are we ready for this sort of armament? And I don't know if we really are. We, we, if, if, if these are weapons, if these are, if, if these are weapons, uh, that only get used out of fear, then I don't know if we should be using them. It's something we should really think about. Um, but I, I, I do, man. I, I watched uh, I watched that Hot Ones show where, where people eat wings and they ask questions. Uh, it's a fun show. I, I like it. It's a little bit of an escapist show for me. Um, but I watch it. It's interesting. Uh, it's interesting is like the spicier it gets, the more aggressive people uh, we'll get about answering the question. Uh, there's a great Bill Burr episode, uh, but I watched the Neil deGrasse Tyson one, and, and he's so pompous even in that. Like, you can't just be up, like, I don't know. And then there's, like, uh, he, you know, he, he only talks about how great it is to, to meet celebrities and shit. Like, like, he just kind of praises a bunch of celebrities. That's his big thing. It's just, like, famous people are really good at things. And it's like, no, famous people are just famous people. Like, there's that fame whoring that, that he does. I, I don't know. I just lose more and more respect for him. I'm sure I'm, I'm a minority in this. I don't, maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. But, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the dude. <laughs> Larger point. We need to stop being afraid of each other. We need to start learning from each other. We need to start understanding each other and we start talking to each other. Having conversations, uh, mutual discourse that doesn't involve um, aggression and anger. You can be passionate, but aggression and anger usually doesn't lead to discourse. It doesn't lead to you understanding somebody's point of view. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. 
Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R A M A N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting, DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet, so at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys, so you can go to patreon.com slash haha and become a patron today, starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.